All right, guys, so it's, I don't know, a few days later, a week later maybe, since the last time I worked on the car. Uh, I was hurt my back for a few days, so I was kind of out for the weekend. Anyways, so what we're going to do today, I have that patch made. Hmm, I guess I should have prepared a little bit here. Hold on, let me get down here. <coughs> get the light on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I made a patch, fits in here. So I'm just gonna weld that in, and then that'll be all fixed up, and then it'll be ready to like give it a coat of some primer. Once that's welded on, then uh, I'll be able to like test fit, like put the clips in, the clips that I bought that hold it, these, wherever they are these clips will be able to be installed and then these brackets can get bolted in so that i can figure out where i have to drill for this this here hole here plus then like i said before i also want to reinforce these both sides with some washers that i'm going to weld on there so i'm going to crawl under there i'll weld that and i'll come back when it's welded and and we'll see how it turned out. All right, so you can see I welded that up. I'll smooth that out and then give her a little bit of seam sealer there. But I mean, it's kind of an open, you know, it's not really a, you know, sealed up unit. I mean, there's, there should be a little rubber, there should be a rubber little cover that goes over this hole. But I mean, there's also this hole, I don't know, which is factory, so. Anyways, I'm going to clean that up a bit. What I also forgot that I wanted to do is I'm going to get in here and I'm going to weld this bead right here where, see, like I welded it up to here and then that other old mount was here. So I couldn't do anything with this part here. So, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's fine because it's been like that, you know, forever. But since I have it all apart, I got the welder. I'll run a bead on that. That'll be welded and then we'll be ready to test fit that bracket in there. I got that welded up. Ugh, let me show you. So I sprayed some of that self-etching primer on. There's where I patched it. I ran a little bit of weld along the edge there. Like I said, probably not necessary, but... So the next thing to do is put these clips in. While that primer was drying on that side, I went ahead and cleaned the other side no point in showing you guys both sides. So that's all primed up. I cleaned the rubber out of the wheel well like I had done on this side and all that stuff. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these clips. Okay, so part number for the clips. Hopefully you can see that. Part number for the bolts. I got them from Summit. So he got the clips, the bolts. Let's go down there and see what we can do here. Uh, of course, I didn't, I haven't test fitted these or anything, but I'm pretty sure they're going to work. They're the ones that it's supposed to have, so. Okay, so. Um, so this clip goes. Oops. Somehow, I bet you I'm gonna need a hammer, right? Oh, okay, so that one's starting to go, but I'll need a hammer to tap them in. Okay, so that one's in. Now the other one. go okay so that's in now the bracket so we'll just... they look pretty good in there now like I said so this one used to go through that hole there was the clip and it went onto the frame but now it's gonna go here so what I have to figure out is 
a where to drill the hole and then how to like have I have the clip and everything so I have to figure out if I can cut a hole here to pop that clip in like I just did there and then actually have it with the factory style clip but then I also have to make a spacer that goes between here and here so I got to figure that out what I decided to do with these brackets instead of putting a spacer like I was gonna do I decided to cut cut this off right here where I had straightened it and then I got a piece of metal cut out I'm gonna weld in here and then weld this onto here so I already did the other side so I'll show you what I'm talking about to go down because I have it on the car test fitting it and you'll be able to see exactly what my plan is so if you see now I welded this little piece of metal this step here and now it bolts it's gonna bolt right to the subframe connector it'll fit tight I'll be able to drill a hole and then I'll be able to make a hole if I want and use the factory style clip like these ones are held in with or I could just put a nut on the back side we'll see but uh, all I'm gonna still do here is I'm gonna straighten this out see how it kind of angles down I'll straighten that so that it's straight so that it goes along with the subframe connector so basically just take a little bit of this off and it's ready to bolt on so I think that'll be way better than putting a washer behind there it was a little more work you know a little bit of welding but as you can see I need the practice so like I had showed I think in an earlier clip I went and got washers some more washers and those I'm gonna weld on here on both sides just to offer a little more thickness of, of the steel here so they won't hopefully won't end up you know like these ones at least not so fast right I mean these obviously are super old but look how much it's those holes have been stretched out most likely because the Caltrack bars have those aluminum bushings could be that they kept loosening off I don't really know like maybe the bolts come loose just from vibrations but so that's my plan weld these washers on I still got to do that one the washers I totally spaced out on that when I just put it on there to test fit it so what I'm gonna do now is cut this and then I'll show you how it's all gonna fit together and then I'll have to weld it and weld the washers on and then these things will be done finally all right thought you'd be excited to watch me cut this so set you up there and then we got this all cleaned up well, I put a new glass in this uh, face mask and can actually see things through it now so now we got our bracket and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld this on there and then this is gonna weld to that somehow like this way so basically like there so I'm going to have to now set this up so that I can tack it together and then once I tack it together then we'll go test fit it make sure it's good before we weld it all right so I got the other one under here now kind of tacked together as you can see basically the same so it seems like this one it's tight up against the frame but it almost seems like it hangs down a little lower so I don't know if that's just this bracket just because this seems to hang down a little lower which is no big deal if this bracket is a little maybe twisted a little or but you can see i got it one tack kind of holding it so now i'll pull it out and weld it so i think i figured out the issue i looked at the other side and i think what i did is when i tacked this instead of tacking it oops, i don't know if i can break the tack with my hand but this this should be alongside this not on top so 
that's why it's uh, sitting higher. So I'll break this tack, move it, retack it, and then start welding. All right, so I have the driver's side one out and it's basically finished. Now I don't wanna I'm gonna find something to like grab it with. You know, use these scissors, which I don't. So you can see there, I welded that nut on, or nut on, washer on. I welded one on this side. I couldn't get all the way around on the edge there, but that should be fine. And then the bracket that's obviously welded on. So yeah, so this is done. All the mods I wanted to do to it are done. Um, so I just have to do the same with the other one, weld those two washers on. Both brackets all done, welded up, painted, as you can see. And so the, on this side here, this is it fully assembled with the uh, leaf spring. So now I'll show you how to put it together. So you take your leaf spring like this, get your Caltrack bar. It goes over top, like so, Whoa! and then you drop it. Okay, I'm already doing something wrong here. There we go. Okay, so then once you get it through, there's this big spacer. Put that in to the solid aluminum bushing, like that. This part of the bar kind of, you know, it, it goes up on the leaf spring there. Then you got two of these big washers. One goes on each side, like that. Okay. Then you take your bracket that we just modified. It fits over top. Of course, I never test fit this one. The other one went. Okay, there we go. There, no problem. So for right now, I'm just putting in these longer bolts because the bolts I had in there are weight, like, especially with doubling it with the, the um, those extra washers that I welded on. Now these bolts are too small, too short. Plus, I realized that I only had a, um, a regular style nut and I want to be able to use like nylock nuts. That could have something to do with why they were getting loose and uh... and stretching those holes all out. So there it is all together. Like I said, then it, then it bolts, you know, there and there and there. Now this will go together as an assembly, get all tightened and bolted and then put up in the car and bolted with the three bolts like it's supposed to be from the factory. The issue is they rust and then they never come off. So, and especially because these pockets, these Camaro pockets are actually a little shorter, which lowers the car. But then this bolt is way up in there and there's no way that I would ever be able to get the bolt in there. We are going to start putting on the TRZ anti-roll bar. And uh, here's a look at what's happening here. So since the last video, I added this little piece of tubing here to um, enclose where the drain is, plus also to give a point for the jack to jack since this bar is gonna be here now and obviously I can't jack on this bar. And if I was to try jacking on just this, the jack would probably slide off, but now it has somewhere to grab. So I have been kind of just figuring out exactly where it's gonna go and I'm pretty, pretty sure that's where it's gonna go. So this is um, TRZ, as you can see, under rear end housing anti-roll bar. So in most typical anti-roll bar setups, you put the anti-roll bar on top and you can't really see it. But because my car has, it's a street car after all, has full exhaust, as you can see, uh, it wouldn't work to do it that way. There's no room there, as you can see. So I opted to go with the underneath type anti-roll bar. Basically what I've got here is I got it kind of mocked up three and a quarter inches from each spring pad, so it's centered in, uh, and then this is kind of where it's gonna sit because 
Like, I mean, I could make it, could have made it sit like right under the rear end here. I could slide it even further forward, maybe. But the plan for now, or right now, is to tack this on. So I'm gonna add, put a couple tacks, tack the brackets on like this. Then I wanna put the rear end in the car so that I can kind of make sure that this position where it's at is gonna be good uh, for the bars, the front bars that go, that are end up, that are gonna end up going kind of up in front of the exhaust there, which is these bars right here, which have to be cut to length. See, the ends are just, they're not welded on. And these are extra long uh, so that I can cut them down. I was also, I've, I've actually been on the garage for a little while today already. I just finished the Trunnion upgrade on the LS7 Corvette um, rocker arms. The Corvette is in another video that you may have already watched. Um, the Trunnion upgrade I didn't bother videoing because it's the same as every other one. Other than the fact that the uh, LS7 has those offset rockers. As you can see here, how different this rocker is than this one. And it also says in the instructions that you have to be careful. The, the, the bores on the rockers may run small and require honing for LS7, but I checked those ones and they were good, so I didn't have to do that. I have these three and a quarter inches from here and same on this side. And then pretty much I'm just, you know, I have the rear end sitting on its on its studs, so it's level or flat, and then this is sitting flat, so it should be pretty much, it looks the same to me. Um, you can tell like this looks weird because there's a bigger gap here than there is here, but this, the housing is also like kind of different lengths on each side. And this, like at first I thought I could use the center bolt, but it's not actually not in the center, it's actually offset a little bit, so I had to do it this way. But, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tack it, like for tonight, this part of the video, I mean for you it'll all be the same, but for tonight, what I just want to do is get that tacked. Once it's tacked, I'm hopefully going to be able to throw it in the car, just so that it's in there and then I can start measuring and figuring and all that kind of stuff. And then once I know that this is good, like this, then I'll fully weld all these brackets and then the housing will be done, ready to be repainted, put back together, put in the car for good, all that stuff. Except before the rear end can go back in, I have to make this upper cross member, you know, which I have to weld these tabs onto, which this is gonna go onto. So, yeah. And then we also got, if you guys didn't know, we got the Calvert sliders are also putting on. So that's another thing that has to get welded on. So uh, I'm going to get the welder set up and I'm going to tack this stuff on. All I want to do is, I, I don't want to go crazy, hopefully. I just want to tack them so that they are on there. And then, like I said, then the rear end can get test fitted. Now, I have to make sure these stay nice and straight or are nice and straight before I weld them. Actually, this, you can see, is kind of, I need something heavy-ish. I got this from Wiley Coyote, this anvil. Okay, so can I get in here and do a tack? I don't know. just happened there oh that explains it I turned the gas off because I'm an idiot after I had welded that um, after I had welded that other part I had turned the gas off. So now I just 
I already, I just started trying to do something here and I already messed up. Okay. Like I blew a big weird hole kind of there because there was no gas. I think it actually tacked it though. Even though it's a little ugly. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it was a little ugly, but it, uh, it did tack it. So see if we can add one on this side. Okay, so that's that's tacked there. And then I'll do the same on that side and then I'll come back once that's done. I got a tack there. Basically one on each of the three corners. There, there, there. So that should hold it. As you can see, the anti-roll bar, anti-roll bars, except I have it upside down, but looks like, but that's okay. That doesn't have to stay. That's gonna come off. Once I know it fits or that this is good, then I'll probably like I'll unbolt all this to weld these, I would think, because I don't want to get all this all hot. So if anything, even if these pull a little bit, I should be able to like tap them back or whatever. Okay, so now the fun part of trying to get it into the car. Put it on the creeper. Creeper. I'll roll it under there. I think I'm going to be able to do this. I kind of just put that there. Like that. Oh, come on. Take this leaf spring down. Slide the rear end like that. And then just lift. Oh, there we go. Now we're thinking, right? Okay, let's get this creeper. Actually, I'll get the creeper under me. And then pretty much just have to put this into location. Well, that's mostly in there. It's it's hitting the exhaust. I don't know why. Unless I need to. There is kind of some adjustment in those leaf spring hangers that I replaced. I wonder if I need to loosen them and move them a bit back, maybe. And the leaf springs are on correctly. That or it's just hanging. But anyways, that's kind of how it's gonna sit in there. And then the arms are gonna go forward like this. If I can show you if that works. And then those other arms are gonna go up. Oh, let me the light. It's so hard to do stuff under a car and video it. They're going to come up from here and they're going to go up to say there. And that's where it's going to be mounted. The other end is up here. So we're pretty much in there and I think that's going to, that's going to be good. That looks different. Yeah. Yeah. The reason the rear end's not sitting flat is because the exhaust is touching, but if I looked at the exhaust and I, I kind of knew that this does rub and keep in mind the rear end is like at full droop right now, right? Like it's not up in the wheel well, well where it would be sitting. And if it was, there would be more room up here. So that's why it's just sitting because the other side, there's actually clearance. I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'll take this, I'll cut this exhaust here and I'll shorten this a little bit to give it extra clearance because it, there's definitely a huge rub mark. So it definitely rubs, which is not good. So that'll get fixed. So 
Pretty much now I just was fitting this bar here. This is gonna go way up into here where that cross member is gonna go. When the rear end's extended, this bar will be like up here somehow, way up here. And then when the car comes down, lowers back down, then this will be kind of like, so I'd like to keep it, you know, if I can have this so that at ride height, it's kind of just like this. And then when the suspension extends, it'll pull it up, right? Because this will go down, this will come down, and this will go up because the body of the car will go up. I need to figure out how long these bars have to be. But what I'm going to do in that for that is I'm going to build that upper cross member, have that all welded in, get the rear end all welded together, welded in, into the car, etc. And then this will be like the last thing that gets welded. So pretty much the car will be all back together. Wheels will be on it. I can put it on the ground, sort of set ride height and then jack it, jack the body up so that the suspension extends and then figure out how long those bars have to go. But uh, yeah, that's it. It's in there temporarily to look at it. And so I was wondering if, um, if this, I kind of thought that this, the anti-roll bar wouldn't hang any lower than the Caltrack bars. And it just does, I don't know if you can really see, but just ever so slightly, it is a little lower, which is surprising because I did move it by moving it forward. You know, like if this bar had been back more where this bar was kind of here, it would hang down even more. So, but I think that should work out pretty good. It definitely looks different with uh, all this extra bars, more uh, race car type stuff. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work out okay. Now I just took the took this level and I double checked to make sure that the this is like six to seven degrees down and then so is this one so they are uh they're both at the same angle i wanted to make sure you know one wasn't sitting weird or anything but they both look good so it's pretty much ready for me to weld and i also took the tailpipes off and now you can see how the tailpipes were actually like rubbing right there and right there on the rear end housing itself so I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll cut cut the v-bands off take a little bit out move the exhaust forward a bit I might have to drill a new hole or oval this hole for the mounting bracket just to kind of move the exhaust out of the way a little bit like I guess it only maybe rubs on full extension I don't know but not the best thing to have so I got those out so that I can start figuring out that lower cross member I welded the first two joints here which actually turned out pretty nice I don't know I'm you know like it's like I said before I don't weld enough I don't practice enough you know so it takes a bit but I don't know if it's because the ground where I'm putting the ground is better I'm not sure I've also been watching some videos from uh, Pacific Arc TIG welding it's a YouTube channel very helpful stuff that he tells you on there so yeah, so I got this welded. Now I'm gonna move on to this side and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna weld this one and this one. And then I'm trying to not put in too much heat into the tubes, right? By welding, you know, welding the whole thing. I'm trying to like, you know, I only, I only welded that and now I'll let this cool. Then I'll go to this side, I'll weld this, let this cool. Then I can go over this side and I'll start. But I probably won't weld this like solid. You know, I'll weld a bit, stop, cool it, you know, because I don't want this to get too hot. I don't want any kind of like warping to happen or anything. So just take my time, go easy, and, uh, and get this thing welded up, hopefully uh, decently. But I'll tell you one thing. Usually when I weld, the welds are really gray after. And these welds actually have some shine to them and some color to them. So I'm doing something right, whatever it is. So I'm, I'm definitely happy about that. I welded the other side now. Now this one turned out really, really good. This one is a little blobby because uh, that's where I had tacked it without the gas. 
and it kind of like blew not blew a hole but it like kind of made a crater there so that one that one's not quite as nice as this side is this one actually turned out really good i think like i said the color alone the the nice shiny color means i'm getting somewhere with what i'm doing because before i was lucky to even get any color like that so all right so now we're just going to move on same thing like i said now i'm going to start i'm going to have to weld this whole side and then i actually want to weld both sides hopefully at least as much as i can of the back side to make these nice and strong both of these so i'm just gonna continue welding and then uh, i'll check in periodically show you how my progress is going like i said filming the welding I, well it's probably boring to watch and maybe it just stresses me out a little bit or gets on my nerve not on my nerves but you know what i mean like then i'm thinking about it and yeah all right that one turned out pretty good and then i did this one and it also turned out pretty good except right at the end i kind of got screwed up because like i was just watching a video from that pacific arc tig welding and you know one thing he says is like you got to be very comfortable when you're welding so when i was welding this one because it's on the inside here now i guess i could have turned the rear end stood it up somehow but i just welded it like this and i basically had my arm like over here with the torch you know, let me i'll get the torch and i'll show you which at first seemed pretty good i was going like this tick 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 you know but then when i got over here the way i was holding it i think it was it was kind of making my wrist like hurt not hurt but be uncomfortable and then my hand kind of started to shake a little bit and i should have stopped and like you know waited a few minutes and let it my hand stop shaking and then it probably would have been better so it kind of kind of messed it up a bit on the end but it's not bad and in there it, i got in there pretty good so now i got to do this side and i got to do this side and i think i might even try to do this corner here not worried about that one so much but this one because it's only welded in one spot it might be good to have this welded too so i might do that first and then i'll i'll move on to this because i like i said i'm trying to keep it cool i'm i'm using air to cool it once as soon as i'm done welding i use the air gun to cool it down just because i don't want to put a bunch of heat in the tubes and uh, but otherwise it's going pretty good like i said i'm, I'm pretty happy I, I don't think these are perfect but uh, they're good enough for me and the nice thing with tig welding is once you paint over it, it it just like if you mig weld it you know the mig weld is really thick and then sometimes it looks kind of blobby and stuff once you paint this you, it's like it almost disappears like it it looks so so nice that's one of the reasons why i like tig welding plus the doesn't make any sparks and yeah i i enjoy tig welding i think it's fun to tig weld it's just you have to have lots of patience to tig weld which sometimes i don't i'm trying today to like slow my roll and just take it easy so all right i'm gonna get back and do some more welding and i'll check back in I'll tell you, it definitely makes a difference when you're comfortable. Like there, I was very uncomfortable trying to weld it just because of the angle of everything. I mean, it welded, it's fine, but you know, could be nicer, but it's it's such an awkward like angle to get the torch in there. So, but I mean, it's welded. It's just, like I said, it could, could be better, but I just have to get more used to, you know, welding in that way. I've decided to weld this part here i'm going to set the rear end up like that because i think if i sit like this the torch i should be able to sit like this and then move along right even halfway maybe and then turn it because then i'm like i'm running into the bracket here so that i to keep going comfortably or i guess if i went maybe if i start here and i kind of go all the way with my hand kind of up here i can go all the way 
just whatever way is the most comfortable. I think going like this would be better. So I have to move the pedal over here. <coughs> Something like this. Okay. Maybe I'll attempt to attempt it while you guys are watching me. I'm feeling I'm feeling more confident here. So which, now it's gonna screw up. Just watch. Also, I'm really trying to clean good with this stainless steel brush, which I think makes a difference too. See, that was good, but once again, the way I have my hand held here, it's like I can't go anymore. I mean, it's kind of shitty because of where this bracket, like how this bracket is, but. Of course, now I see, maybe it is your fault. No, just kidding. I started out pretty good, and then I got into some trouble halfway through, which could have been because of how I was positioned with my hand. But then kind of I started to go like, instead of going right along the crack where the two pieces need to be welded, I kind of went off a little bit, and then I had to go back and kind of go over it, and then at the end I kind of messed it up. But overall it looks okay. I mean, at least the part that you will, would be able to see from the back of the car looks really good. This front part looks a little whatever, but so that bracket fully welded. Now I just have to turn it around, weld the other side, and then the housing mods will be done. So everything will be done. It'll be ready to like scuff it and give it a coat of paint and be ready to reassemble. Everything's welded. There it is. Put some of that, uh, self etching primer on there's that thing on the bottom yeah so it's ready to be give it a coat of paint and then uh, it's ready to start putting it back together so I'm gonna give it a coat of paint now and then uh, move on to this cross member which I already got the piece of chromoly out that I'm gonna use to make that cross member like I could probably just weld those tabs right to the frame or something but I don't know I think it'd be better to be on a cross member so and I mean this is this chromoly is like you know weighs next to nothing so I'm not really adding a ton of weight I'll have to make some side plates I'll take you under there and show you that but right now I'm gonna uh, paint and I'm just painting it with this rust-oleum engine enamel good to high heat oil resistant uh, because I have it because I got it on sale so I don't know if this is as fun as watching paint dry, watching someone paint something, but. I mean, I'm having a good time painting it. So. Okay, I threw on that fill cap. So fancy that looks. And uh, still letting that dry. So let's go under the car here. <sighs> took the shocks off get those out of the way and I undid the fuel lines they were clamped here so I did that so basically on this triangle right here is where this cross member is gonna go one on obviously on each side because I want to have it tucked up kind of in here so that it's out of the way of drive shaft I mean the drive shaft is here so really it could be I could go down here with it or something maybe onto the frame I think I think tucking it up is the way to go well, let's see if we put it in here yeah, see that's way down that's gonna I'm scared that the drive shaft somehow might hit it so we're gonna go up here but obviously it's way too long so 
It also, ooh, that was probably loud. It's also, I'm sure you can notice, it's kind of on an angle here. This isn't flat. This has got a kind of angle, so we're gonna have to, I guess what I'll do first is get in here and clean this up with a cut off, not cut off wheel, with a, like a little grinder. I have a small disc grinder. I'll clean all the paint off, get that all cleaned up, and then um, measure to cut this tube so that it fits in there. Like I'll rough cut it and then have to like angle cut it to fit into these angles. And then I have to make some little plates that are going to go on there just to double it up to make it extra strong basically. And then I can weld those to this tube and then put that in and weld, you know, it'll be easier. All right, so let's do that. <laughs> 